everyone, welcome back to, well, we usually do uh, influential horror films with me and Carmella, aka Salem Seller, but this week we're going to do something a little bit special. February happens to be Black History Month, and my I happen to be a white man, so it's not going to work with just me doing Black History, so I decided to bring on some <laughs> African-American princesses or queens with me, my wife Faith Williams, to my right, and Carmella from Salem Seller to my left. Hello. Hi, guys. Happy so, Black History Month. Oh, yeah. there's a dog. Yeah. Happy Black History <laughs> Month, guys. Uh, you guys get the shortest month of the year, of course. Of course. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Screwed you guys over. And we wanted to talk about Black History in horror films because, surprisingly, uh, there's been a lot of horror films that have had a lot of great Black leads in them. And yeah. I'll start it off and go right out of the gate with probably the one that started it all, Night of the Living Dead with Dwayne Jones. He was the lead in that movie, and, you know, it's really commenting on how, at the very end of that movie, spoiler alert, like, he survives this big zombie apocalypse that happens, and then the cops end up killing, which I think is, uh, you know, very strong imagery, especially for the 1960s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Extremely. Extremely. It's very ironic, the ending. Every time I watch it, I'm like... Okay, he survived, and then, bam, he gets shot. And I'm like, even though I know what's going to happen, it's very frustrating every single time I watch it. What I didn't feel about the remake. Yeah, with Tony Todd. Yeah, Tony Todd in the lead in that one, and he does a great job as well. I like that one. You know, it's colorized now, but it's still got the, they're coming to get you, Barbara. (laughs) They're coming to get you, Barbara. They're horny, Barbara. They've been dead a long time. I actually met them at a Walking Dead convention, like, I don't know, like 10 years ago, 15. It's been a while, but I met them both. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Faith, do you like the Night of the Living Dead, the original one, or do you even know it? I don't think I saw it. Uh Um, But I know, but what you just said kind of reminded me of um, Jordan Peele's movie at the end. Which one was it? It wasn't us. It's Get Out. And when you think the cops are going to come and they're going to shoot him, but it's somebody else. But that reminded me of that because I remember watching that movie and my heart stopping like, oh, of course, he gets away and this is what happens. But it it had a different and, you know, a different take on it. But like, I remember watching that and I thought all bad things. Well, there are actually two different endings to get out. Mm-hmm. So oh. there, there is an ending that you would hate because I hate it. I think Jordan Peele said it felt too dark. So he went with the other ending. But the cops do come and arrest him and he goes to jail and his friend comes to meet him. And he's like, you know, I'm trying to get you out. It, it's, it's a very dark, depressing ending. Oh, no. That is an old. Yeah, you have to watch it. It's not a good one. You're not going to like it. Yeah, but... yeah. Do you know why they changed the ending? Did it say because it was too dark, or I, that's what I thought? It's because of the uh, uh, the Donald Trump uh, becoming president. They decided to change it because the original intent was to show about like these white liberals and how they actually act like they're a part of the group with black. That's like kind of a big theme in the movie. How the guy's like, ah, I'll vote for Obama a third time if I could. So the original mm-hmm. intention was to show that even though they do that, they're still like white people, kind of still living above it. Like this guy, he kills a white family in the end. It, it seems like so. Of course, he goes to jail. But then once Trump became president. And he felt like it was irresponsible to have that. That's end. a dangerous press. Yeah, 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 I see that. I can uh, understand. I did not know that. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, Very when interesting. I was researching, I read that last night. I was like, oh, because I have seen that other ending. And man, that would have been just sending you home sad. Yeah, when I, I don't think I would have liked the movie as much if you that's wouldn't. how it ended. You wouldn't. It yeah. was yeah. Heavy, so dark. It was like, because you're rooting for him. Like, he's just. As an actor, I just love him. But, like, as a character, you're rooting for him. Like, he's literally, mm-hmm. like, he's going through some stuff. He's having flashbacks of his mom's death. And then it's just, like, he's being tricked by a woman that he trusted and he liked, even though he had some doubts about it. Like, mm-hmm. did you tell your family that I was Black? And then, you know, he goes back for the woman who's really, like, the grandmother. And then he gets screwed again. So it's like, oh, come on. Can this guy not catch a break? Yeah, yeah. Of course he can't. That's just not how it works. And Daniel Kaluuya starred in three, uh, two of the three Jordan Peele movies. He also was the star of Nope. So 
Jordan Peele mm-hmm. makes a lot of movies that are dealing with how black people have been treating in America and all of his films. That's one central theme. You know, Us is going to be a separate video, so we'll talk about that on its own. But even in Nope, yeah. like, that's dealing with that. Daniel Kalu is another great lead actor. And then Carmel, did you want to nominate one? Yes. Um, so one of my favorites is Fallen with Denzel Washington and John Goodman. Tom. That is... Tom is on my side. Yes, it is. I, fun fact, I'm the one that showed him that movie. Did you? Yeah, mm-hmm. he never saw it before. Really? And He's I said, so sh- yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but he loves movies. It, yeah. Movies for him don't have a time. That I was surprised that he never saw that, especially because it's Denzel. But that's a movie you know? that is not really talked about that much. So it's really easy for it to slip through the cracks for him not to see it even but, though it's like you know he does love movies like who talks about Fallen? like it's no very one. rare that people talk about it Fallen. gives me the heebie-jeebies it's a this good one. thing that you could touch somebody and you're possessed mm-hmm. gives me the heebie-jeebies like that scared me and i know and i i always forget about that movie but i when you say the name i mm-hmm. remember how it made me feel when i first watched the movie like who's gonna believe that you like this situation like something as far as just being touched and getting possessed? It's like you're just you're you feel so frustrated for the characters involved because they're trying to explain this to people and they're like, You're crazy. Like, how is that even possible? How did you guys feel about the ending? I'm never really a fan of the ending and that we didn't get a sequel from this film because it was just such a strong, powerful movie. And then to end it where, like, spoiler, the cat takes the demon soul and, like, runs off with it. Denzel ends up dying. It was just frustrating. Like, I really felt like we needed a sequel from this. I want to know what happens with you know, the woman, the cop's daughter, I forgot her name, and then the, then Denzel's nephew. Like, I want more to this story. So it's frustrating that we didn't get, like, a sequel from it, especially with that ending. No, I agree. And I it's I just think it didn't do well financially, and that's the reason why it hasn't gotten as much love over the years. Because whenever they talk about Denzel Washington, they never, ever bring up how good he is in this movie, or even how good he is with John Goodman. It just never, ever comes up. And it's sad because it's a There's movie. another movie that he was in The Bone Collector that doesn't get what it should. Uh, the Bone Collector was amazing. It's such a good thriller. With Angelina such a good thriller. Mm-hmm. You would think yeah. with that cast that people would be talking about this movie a little bit more. It's such a dark, mm-hmm. film. but it's like nobody talks about The Bone Collector. That's no. a good one. Yeah, That is a good one. Steve, Stephen King, I just read uh, The Outsider and Stephen King kind of took the, the fallen um, aspect of touching somebody but with this he took them and you now you become that this thing we don't know what it is becomes you if he like touches you then he can form into you and do anything and in the book they have like he cut the guy and he became him and he hurt a kid now they think that this guy is the one that hurt the kid mm-hmm. so like he kind of took that premise from fallen of like you can just become who who or, you know touch somebody and you become them from, or you can from say phone. you took it from the thing, because that's like very similar. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. It replicate somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Faith, you brought up before we started uh, Queen of the Damned. Would you say that's a big one? Oh, I love. That's one of my favorite vampire movies. One of my favorites. I think Aaliyah just, uh, she was just wonderful in that movie. She really, like, I, when I think of a vampire, I think of her performance. Like, she was strong but scary in her own way. And she didn't even have many lines. Just her movement and just the way she was and her soft voice. Even though she was a vampire, that was kind of, it was supposed, you know, a soft voice is supposed to be calming. But she, it was scary. You know, that was actually her brother's voice. A lot of that. Really? Around the time she passed away. So her brother had to finish recording for her. Yeah. Oh, I was going to actually ask because I know that I remember seeing that in Blockbuster and she already died. And at that point, I was Mm -hmm. wondering when they record. So, yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's sad. Yeah. Her brother filmed a lot of like voiced over a lot of it for her because she she was she had passed already. Uh, Oh, that's kind of like. What's his name? The one that does uh, Paul. He died with what's his uh, name? Paul Walker. Paul Walker. His brother, I think, did a lot of his stuff too. 
Yeah, because they look alike. They help yeah. finish Fast Seven. Yeah, they would like kind of shoot mm-hmm. him from a distance because they have like similar structure, so they're able to finish it with him because he died mid shooting too. Sad. It is yeah. sad. It's horrible when they. But die. I mean, I guess it's a way you honor your family. It makes sense to finish it off that way, but I think we should also shift our conversation to who is the greatest lead black horror actor of all time, in my opinion, uh, at least mm-hmm. as far as his movies, that would probably be Tony Todd. You're wearing the shirt, Carmela, for Candyman, which is... Yes, had to. Had to represent Love Tony, Tony Todd. Todd. Love him. Love, love, love him. And you, you guys are friends on the, the artist formerly known as Twitter, right? Yes, yes. He follow- He's awesome. He follows me on Twitter. He was like one of the first because I have Christy Swanson follows me. Uh, I have a few people following me, and he was one of the first. And he was really cool. Like he he he's very fan friendly. So if you tweet about him, he reposts it, he comments, he likes it, he interacts. Like that's a cool dude, you know. Because not not a lot of celebrities do do that. So it was really cool that he did that. So yeah, we're we're BFFs, we're buddies. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he's a cool, he seems like a really cool guy. So that's yeah. awesome that he's actually able to uh, interact with fans of his because he's, I mean, he's so scary. In the first Candyman, be my victim. He he petrifies me. That's why Candyman is my favorite horror film of all time. It's mainly a lot of it is due to him. And he only kills one person in the first Candyman film. He kills that one doctor. He slits him from gut to gullet. And that's yes. it. Yes. It's just so brutal, but and he also was paid a thousand dollars for every single bee sting he gets in that movie. Didn't but, he kill her friend as well? Well, he kills him, but we only see him kill one person. Oh, and actually, okay. When he kills her friend, and she, he, he gets, he drains the blood from her face. It is brutal. Oh, he was just he, he was so like. There's something so ominous and dark about his character, and it's just like. Literally haunts your dream. Sorry, guys. Faith had to actually get out of here because we just were having some connection issues, and we're just gonna go on. But it seems like two streams works better than three. We'll have to work on that in the future. We gave it a try. She got her comments in, but it's just me and Carmelo again. <laughs> yeah, the, the Rottweiler getting decapitated. That's always like a hard scene for me. Remember yeah. that scene? It's that brutal. I have a really and they show the head too. Oh my god, I, it's rough. Uh. All the blood, the head, it's like, oh my god, I just, I could have lived without it. Yeah. Do you, you know Tony Todd's going to be in a new up-and-coming movie called Stream? No, I, I've heard of Stream, but I didn't know he was going to be in it. Yeah, it's like this new up-and-coming horror movie coming out, and it has um, Daniel Harris in it, um, Tony Todd. Like, the cast is ridiculous. It is such a good cast. Like I And, and it's from the people who made a Terrifier, so you know I'm, like, already, like easing my way into this film like there it it looks really good it looks really dark the mask is really cool oh that's awesome yeah that's right up your alley because tony todd doesn't really pop up too much anymore like he also had another role in um he plays basically death in the final destination movies now you have to figure out how and when it's coming back at you yeah and he's supposed to be in the newer newer one coming out Really, he's making a return to that series because he was only in the first two, right? And then he was in the remake of Candyman, which I actually thought he was really good in that. Even though he doesn't really speak, it's kind of like building on the Candyman lore, which actually was leaning into a theme of the first Candyman film, which was Cabrini Green and uh, Cabrini Green, and how those uh, projects basically showing you the difference between like the neighborhood, the upper class neighborhood. And then how, you know, the ghetto, how the bad neighborhoods look. And, like, they have the same exact apartments. They just, you mm-hmm. know, what are they, what are they, that's just gentr- gentrification. That's all that is. That movie is trying yes. to show you. And they sneak it into an early 90s slasher film. So having deep themes like that is fantastic. And I love how the the newer film dove into that a little bit more and told you, like, showed you what happened to the baby Anthony and what, you know, what was become of Cabrini Green in that area and, like, the flashbacks. I think it was really well done. I thought it was great. I I was one of my favorite aspects of that movie was actually Mm -hmm. leaning into and showing us all. And, you know, I thought the second one was really good. It was on, what was that in the director? But it was that Nia DaCasa. Uh, she directed, she did a great job on that movie, and uh, mm-hmm. I think it was Yahya Abdul Mahim the uh, second was actually the guy who plays the new Candyman, and he's always great as well. He's in the Aquaman movies, but he's in Us. He's the father in Us. Like he's oh, like yeah. two tickets. Remember that scene <laughs> when they're at the fair? He's the father. 
Oh yeah, he's the first dad. Oh my yeah. god, we, we only get to see him in a few scenes. He's the one who gets he wins her the uh what was it, the Michael Jackson shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like I say like that line where he's like two tickets. Two tickets. Two tickets. Two tickets. Two tickets. Like I say it like all day long because I'm weird, but like that I don't know why. Like he, I know he's just in this like the movie like for like ten minutes, but he just like his character like impacted me watching the film. Like he's like the father who's kind of around but not around and does the bare minimum. Like you mm -hmm. could see like the dynamic between him and the mom and how like they're bickering and he wants another beer and the mom's like another beer. Like it's just like that scene to me like definitely stands out. But he's great at it, even though it's a little scene. He seemed like a 1980s dad, actually, in that in that one scene. Because, like, that's supposed to be, like, the 80s. And I, I he felt like that, the clothes he was wearing. That's why I never realized that was him, actually, in that one mm -hmm. scene. Because they always shoot him low from, like, the kid's angle. So yeah. He, so I always get kind of thrown off. I never even realized. And they kind of do something similar like that with Lakeith Stanfield and Get Out. Like, you know, he's in a small role in that. And then Lakeith Stanfield, uh -huh. like, blew up after that movie. I love Lakeith Stanfield. I love him. Yeah, I, I I always get sad because like you know he's he has that like chill <laughs> vibe about him in the beginning, and he sees the car pull, pulling up, and he's like, "Not today. This is not gonna happen. I'm in a white neighborhood, and it's not gonna happen today." And he's still, you know, they still get him, and then you see him later on after like all like everything they did to him, and you could tell like once the flash hits, like he, his like face is just changes. And and it's just like, ugh. like I mean, this is his future. Fun. He's basically done. Yeah, there's no way for him to get out of the sunken place, is there? Right? He's that's no, it. that guy already got his uh, he got his brain already transported over there, which is just messed up as it is. I mean, don't we mm -hmm. all want to be athletes? You gotta, you know, you gotta take what you can get. <laughs> You're cheating the system. <laughs> and it's like the lady who hypnotized him is now dead. So there's really like even if they unhypnotized him and got him out of the second place, there's no way to do it. She's dead. Yeah, you know? that's it. She's gone. I mean, she deserves to be gone. But yeah, there's no way for her yeah. to reverse it for some of these people who uh, unfortunately have gotten screwed over. Uh, you have another choice you want to talk about? Uh, another one would be Tales from the Hood. Oh, that nice. is a great film that is one i really love i actually rewatched it recently because it's been so long so all the little stories like i remember like overall but i wanted to like kind of get into it again and just just kind of refresh my memory but that is definitely a great film and i i think over the years like when i was younger i feel like it was talked about a lot but I really don't really hear that many people talking about it anymore no unfortunately that's like one that kind of got lost to time um, mm -hmm. like a lot of movies, unfortunately do, but one person who, uh, who appears in a few different horror films and I guess would be considered, I, I mean, I guess a scream King, uh, Keith David. Yes. Keith David. I love Keith David. Keith David is great. I love him in, uh, you know, obviously in the thing, that's really where he stands out the most, but he's also in they live. He worked with John mm -hmm. Carpenter a lot and another guy you've actually met. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. He was cool. Like he was very, he was very down to earth. I was very nervous. He was just dancing though, like living his best life. I'm like, this man is cool. Like he's just. He's like, got scary best. eyes. That's what it is. That's why. Right? <laughs> I I was sitting right next to him taking the picture, and I was said to him, I was like, oh, we're just like hanging out, like we're friends. And he looks at me and he's like, aren't we? And I just died inside. I'm just <laughs> like, oh my god, just like, are you freaking kidding me? Now I'm sweating. Now my hands are getting clammy. Like I was like, just kill me. Like I just like just made my life at that moment. Uh, that's awesome yeah. I mean, yeah you could die and go to heaven then finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, yeah i don't know maybe i'll let you in <laughs> <laughs> come on he's got to have a sense you? of humor right yeah <laughs> hope so <laughs> what's another one of yours Here's one. Uh, the Wayans, Keenan Ivory Wayans, directed the first two scary movies. Not exactly horror movies, but they're horror comedies. They are, yeah. And, and we get the Wayans brothers in both, you know, in the first two. And then once they go to three, it's not even, um, what's it called? The Wayans are completely out of the series. Keenan Ivory stops directing, and it mm -hmm. actually shifts to the director of the Naked Gun movies. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So like, it makes that... sense now when I think about how the films change. 
They do because like that guy likes like all those like weird sight gags and stuff like that. But in the first two movies, they're like directly like spoofs of like you know the first one. I think personally is the best. Making fun of Scream yeah. and uh, I know what you did a little last summer mostly. I love it. Like take my strong hand. Is that the second one? That's the second. That's kind of Chris like, Elliott. I love that. <laughs> the House of Haunted Hill vibe that they have with that one. It's oh, like... it really does feel like that was. I forget what the name of the company is. I think it might be Dark Castle, but like Thirteen Ghosts and everything. Yes. Yeah. Dark Castle. Oh, yes. They got that cool look to them. Like, uh, and yeah, it does kind of feel like, it, especially when uh, <laughs> they're down there fighting about their handicaps. <laughs> 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 Allow me to uh, give you a hand. <laughs> Why don't you stand and take a bow? <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in a while. I used to watch it. <laughs> I love the names. It's been a while. Yeah, that was no. a good one. That was a good one. I did not think of that one. That was a good choice. Yeah, you have any more you got to discuss? Um, another one, which I like, got into some arguments with some people about oh, this yeah. one, it being a horror film, is Blade. Now, Blade is one of my favorite vampire movies. I remember seeing it when I was really young, and Wesley Snipes is phenomenal in this film. Like, it's really hard to think of anybody else taking on this role. But yes, it's an action, sci-fi, Marvel horror movie. Like, how do you think of a vampire movie and not related with 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 horror, right? Um, but it's just it's just one of those films where it's just like he's just such a strong, powerful character, and the way Wesley Snipes plays his character it was just perfect. It was on spot, it was on point, and it was just it's one of my favorite my favorite. I guess you want to call it black horror films or a horror film with a strong black lead. It's just it's just even the sequel. I love the sequel. Like the sequel is just it gets a lot of hate. I feel, but those vampires were badass with their mouths completely opening. And I love this the the story behind it. It's, it's just such a they're, they're great. I don't know. They're what about great. Blade Trinity? You like that one? I do like Blade Trinity. I feel like it was a little corny at times. Um, I don't like the beginning of it because I don't like Whistler dying. Um, that was very frustrating. Sorry, spoiler. Um, that was very frustrating to me. I let, I thought Ryan Reynolds was good. Um, Jessica Biel. I love Jessica Biel, and I liked them two together. But I didn't really like the Scooby Gang feel. I felt like there was a Scooby Gang feel with the other characters. So it, I enjoy the movie. And, and and Dracula, I can't forget about him. Like he was like scary. He was dark, and like his killing was cool. But I also felt like he was just watered down. I wanted him to be more brutal more dark, more vicious. Like he's supposed to be like the first. He's supposed to be like the biggest badass there is. Now, Blade is ba a badass. Like I expected like a monster. Like I wanted scarier than the monsters in number two. And I feel like the vampires in number two were more scary than Dracula. So that kind of threw me off. I, I agree. I, I also completely agree with your take. Anyone who doesn't think Blade is a, a horror character, yes, it is a superhero, but 100%. They feel, especially the first Blade, like, and the second one's directed by Guillermo del Toro, who, you know, dabbles in, like, horror fan. He, you can mix genres. I don't think people realize that. Just because mm -hmm. it's a superhero movie doesn't mean it can't be a horror movie, too. You know? Yeah. Like Brightburn, I would label that a horror film. So I think that Blade falls into that category as well. And, man, Wesley Snipes is just perfect as Blade. But the first one has so many scary elements and even when i think about it it's a just this weird little scene that's really you know when they drive when the car's driving through the city and they speed it up but the city looks so dark and the papers are blowing everywhere oh i just love how that that can get under your skin it makes the world feel like there's no one around like oh, mm -hmm. i love that so he had blade is a great choice and you know we're gonna get mahershala ali's blade in uh hopefully at some point in the next like 10 years and he's got some <laughs> big shoes to fill <laughs> He does. He, I'm like patiently waiting for this film. I'm nervous about it, but I'm also excited because, you know, the it's the character I really love, but Wesley Snipes brought it to life for us. Yes, he really did. And it's going to be hard to not see him in it, but, you know, we do got to bring it to a different generation. I think Trinity came out like 05 or something like that. So that movie is already almost 20 years old. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize it was that old. Oh, God, I'm so old. <laughs> It's like getting out of high school. That was so long ago. It's crazy to think, right? I, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the first one was 98. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Uh, 
Yeah, we're getting old. That's that's a little depressing. Getting... <laughs> it doesn't feel old. Like I watch it to this day. I watch both the first two movies often, and they don't feel dated to me. They still feel like fresh. Like they feel they don't feel. I don't know, like movies that you watched like in the sixties or seven, like you know that long ago. They don't feel like that to me. They feel like new. No, I know. I agree. It's just, you know what, though? That's the thing. And especially now with new technology, like, it looks good. It's like they're bringing it to us in, you know, beautiful new 4K or stream. Everything just looks great now. So it's like it doesn't feel old. You can go back and watch a 40s movie, and it'll actually feel kind of new again. I have to get into the 4K. You're a 4K king. I need to um, get into them more. Well, I'm here for you whenever you want to. (laughs) I'll be your guiding hand. (laughs) My strong hand. (laughs) So, uh, do you have any more or is that it? There's there's so many. I literally could talk all day long. Um, I think those are my favorites. Like like you said, Us, we're going to be discussing that on another video. So, make sure you guys watch that one. Unless you do it before. (laughs) Make sure you watch both. Oh, watch it again. Barbarian's another good one. And it, this is a female, a female lead. That is um, true. We don't get many black female leads. I mean, when we get to us, they're obviously, but, you know. Yeah. But you're right. You're right. Barbarian. 100%. I think she's biracial, but still, I'm biracial. Like, you know, we're still black women. And another one would be Vampire in Brooklyn. Brook- yeah, Vampire in Brooklyn. I was saying Brooklyn and Vampire all morning. But uh-huh. Angela Bassett, you know, yep. she's strong lead in this film so those are two i kind of like honorable mentions i want to throw out there like strong females in the in film so you know black females and those are two that i love i owe vampire in brooklyn another watch that one uh i didn't love it the first couple times i saw it it's just you know what it was i got myself hyped for an eddie murphy movie and uh it just wasn't the same So I just kind of I, I went into it, I think, with the wrong mindset. I was like, you know, OK, this is going to be a funny Eddie Murphy movie. It's funny at parts, but that's not really the tone it's going for. Yeah, it's like it's dark, but it has a little goofy vibe to it. You know, yeah. when you got the name, the the character's name. He's Dwayne Wayne from 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 a um, different world. I know Faith's very into that lately. Oh, I've only been listening to I've heard the theme song <laughs> to a different world about 40 times in the last like. <laughs> three weeks so uh I, i'm an expert on a different world now <laughs> I, I can't remember the actor's name but he's in the movie you see him like he, you see him morphing into like dracula's like henchmen throughout and like eating bugs parts of his body's falling off so like he 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 was more like the goofy aspect to the the film to make it more like a like a kind of like an eddie murphy film but but just dark and gory and bloody and, yeah i should give it another try you should. You should. Kadeem Hardison was the name of Dwayne from uh, A Different World. Yes. Love, I used to love him and his, like, flip-up glasses. I, I know. The flip-up glasses were cool. I tried those. Those, uh, The way that looks on TV is nothing how that works in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you. <laughs> he was just so smooth with it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, he's a cool guy. I'm not cool, so I can't pull it off. <laughs> <He's cool. laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Anyway, guys, happy Black History Month. I hope you yes. enjoyed the films that we chose. If you have any that you feel like we left off, leave those in the comments section below on both of our channels. I'm John from Let's Talk. And I'm Carmela from Salem Cellar. And we'll be, and we'll be right around. back. Oh, <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Thanks. We're keeping that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>